Welcome to Campbelltown Free Church to our Sunday worship uh, with a difference. We invite you to worship with us, to listen to God's word and to sing his praise uh, wherever you are, wherever you're watching and listening. We're going to read from the book of Psalms, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. According to the British Archaeological Survey, Argyll was last hit by an earthquake on the 24th of January uh, 2017. I wonder, do you remember it? Uh, well, probably not, because it only registered 2.4 in the Richter scale. Sadly, however, places suffer from real earthquakes, and survivors of those ones often speak about how panic sets in very quickly, as everything people thought was stable and secure suddenly becomes unstable and insecure. You don't need me to tell you that in the past week our world has moved on its axis. Right now it seems as if we are living through an earthquake as everything we thought stable and secure has shifted. Expressions that we never heard of six months ago like social distancing and flattening the curve and self-isolation, they're all common currency now. Anxiety and fear has set in. As Dorothy said to Toto her dog in The Wizard of Oz, we're not in Kansas anymore. What do we do in a time like the one we're in? We listen carefully to Psalm 46. The mention of an earthquake and a tsunami in verses two and three lead correctly to the conclusion that Psalm 46 was written in a time of instability and uncertainty, a time of crisis. The historical setting is most likely the time when Sennacherib, the Assyrian king, attacked Jerusalem during the reign of Hezekiah, the, last godly, uh, the next to last godly king of Judah. The psalm gives us three pictures of God and each of them speaks of how God reassures his people in times of instability and uncertainty. So let's look at them in turn. First of all, in a time of instability and uncertainty, Psalm 46 verses 1 to 3 reminds us that God protects because he is a strong refuge. God protects because he is a strong refuge. In Ireland, when they were establishing a monastery from which to evangelise the locals, the first building that the monks uh, constructed uh, was a church. However, very soon they had to build uh, another building. It was a high tower with a door about 12 feet above ground level. And one of the reasons for building this high tower with a well above ground level entrance was the Vikings. When they saw the Vikings approaching, they would retreat into the high tower and be safe from the marauding Norse raiders. In Irish monasticism, the high tower was a safe place. The psalmist would have referred to a high tower with the term a refuge because a refuge means a place of safety and protection. 
In a time of instability and uncertainty, the only safe place, the only protective ref refuge is God himself. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. And because we have this assurance that he will protect us, we will not fear. Now, please don't misunderstand God's protection. Some imagine that it means that God protects us from crises. So that Christians will never ever face any times of instability or uncertainty. But that's not what Psalm 46 teaching about God's protection is saying. What it is saying is that God protects us in our crises, helping us not to be overwhelmed by fear and panic. In a time of instability and uncertainty, we must not look to anything or anyone other than our protecting God who is our refuge and strength. And when we look to him, we discover that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And then secondly, in a time of instability and uncertainty, Psalm 46 verses 4 to 7 remind us that God refreshes because he is a reinvigorating river. God refreshes because he is a reinvigorating river. In these verses we're watching Jerusalem under siege, but the besiegers can't force its surrender because the city has an uninterrupted water supply. We're witnessing the end result of the measures that Hezekiah, the king, put in place to prepare Jerusalem for Sennacherib's siege. And one of them was to secure the city's water supply by di diverting the Gihon Spring through an underground tunnel so that it flowed into a collection point inside the city walls instead of outside as, a, as, a, as it had done previously. Now I I'm sure that as you listen to the reading of Psalm 46 you, you notice that there were two types of water mentioned. In verses 2 and 3 there are the waters of the tsunami caused by the earthquake, which are destructive as they roar and foam. In complete contrast, verse 4 speaks about a river which is restorative, a river whose streams make glad. And it's the picture of God as a restorative river that Psalm 46 uses to show how God refreshes us. The picture of a restorative river informs us that God refreshes us with his presence. You see, we're back in the Garden of Eden in verse 4. The first time we come across a river in the Bible is in the Garden of Eden. And this river watered the Garden of Eden, bringing its productivity. Genesis 2 verse 10. The most significant aspect of life in the Garden of Eden was God's presence. But in, in, in Psalm 46 verses 4 to 7, God's presence is linked three times with the Garden of Eden imagery of a river. Where the Most High dwells, God is within her, the Old Lord Almighty is with us. These are pictures of God's presence side by side to the river of an, uh, the image of a river. And this connection is telling us that God refreshes us in times of instability and, and uncertainty with his presence. Now God's presence isn't something vague or fuzzy. At the end of verse 5 and into verse 6 uh, we're informed that God's presence brings practical help just when we need it. That phrase at break of day in verse 5 is a throwback to the Exodus, the time when the Israelites were escaping from Egypt and going through the dried up Red Sea. And here's how Exodus 14 tells what happens. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud, that is the symbol of God's presence. God looked down from the, the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. 
and the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horses. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And here's the Psalm 46 uh, verse 5 connection. At break of day, the sea went back into its place and the Egyptians were fleeing from the Lord and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. Do you see what this phrase at the break of day or at daybreak is saying? It's saying in a time of instability and uncertainty, God is with us and his presence assures us of its help, not a moment before or not a moment after, but exactly when we need it. The picture of a restorative river informs us that God refreshes us by his spirit. We've moved in location. We're now in Jerusalem on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacle tabernacles and Jesus stands up and an imagery drawn from Psalm 46 announces this whoever believes in me streams of living water will flow from within him John 7 verse 47 then John adds, adds this comment by this he meant the spirit whom those who believe in him receive in a time of instability and uncertainty God refreshes us by his spirit he doesn't do it in some mystical, touchy-feely experience. Instead, the Spirit refreshes us by means of the promises of the Bible. Psalm 46 verses 4 to 7 are littered with references to God's covenant promises to Abraham and David. The city of God, the holy place the Most High, the God of Jacob, and to God's word, he lifts up his voice. And this connection between these covenant promises of God's word and the, the, the river, the Holy Spirit, reminds us that it's through the promises of God's word that the Holy Spirit refreshes us. This picture of a restorative river informs us that God refreshes us uh, not just with his presence and by his spirit, but also with his hope. If a river makes its first appearance in the Bible in the Garden of Eden, a river makes its final appearance in the Bible in the new Garden of Eden, because that's how heaven is described in Revelation 22 verses 1 and 2, as a garden watered by a river. In a time of instability and uncertainty, God comes to us, and by his spirit, through the promises of, the, of his word, he refreshes us with this hope of heaven. The hope of heaven, of a time when all instability and all uncertainty will be banished. The hope of a time when all pain and all tears and all, and all hardship and all suffering will be over. It's only this spirit-inspired and Bible-based hope that will keep us going in times of instability and uncertainty. And then finally, in a time of instability and uncertainty, Psalm 46 verses 8 to 11 remind us that God controls because he is an all-conquering warrior. God controls because he is an all-conquering warrior. When instability and uncertainty intimidate us and when fear and panic bully us, God comes as this all-conquering warrior and he fights for us against everything that threatens us. Our world is up against a formidable enemy in the shape of coronavirus. However, the Bible says that human beings are up against an up against even more formidable enemies sin death satan but the good news is that god himself has stepped into the middle of the battle in the person of jesus the mighty god the invincible warrior king 
and by his cross he has conquered them all. Our God is in control because Jesus has defeated all his and our enemies and the empty tomb announces Jesus' victory and rule. Not only does the picture of God as an all-conquering warrior establish God's control, but so does the, the picture of God as a fortress. Kings built castles as a statement that they controlled that area. Think of our castle, Tarbert Castle. For centuries the west of Scotland had been controlled by the various lords of the Isles. However, in 1493, James IV of Scotland launched a military campaign to seize back control. And in 1494, having defeated John MacDonald of Islay, James IV set up court for a brief time in Tarbert Castle. He was showing that he was now in charge. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That's a statement of faith. God is in total control. And our response to God's total control is found in verse 10 of Psalm 46. One of the most, if not the most, misinterpreted verses in the Bible. I know that this verse has helped lots of Christians find peace in a time of crisis as they've quietened their minds and been still in God's presence. I'm not trying to belittle the help our kind and gracious God gave to them through that interpretation of Psalm 46 verse 10. But it's not what Psalm 46 verse 10 is saying. It's not an invitation to sit down quietly and meditate and be silent until some nice feeling envelops us. Rather, it's an order to be active, to, to, to surrender, to keep quiet, to shut up. It's a command to submit to God's control and God's way of thinking. You see, in, in times of instability and uncertainty, when our minds are filled with anxious and fearful thoughts, uh, we're under threat spiritually. Uh, Psalm 46 verse 10, it's, it's a battle cry. It's a declaration of war against anxiety and fear. It is God commanding us not to be passive, but to be aggressive and to fight back against our anxiety and fear with the truth. That God is in control. It's a battle order from God to us not to roll over and give up but to get off the floor and stand up with courage to the anxiety and fear that is bullying us and to do so with the truth that God is in total control and if we do that we find the truth that God is in control brings stability and certainty and peace to our lives. The story is told of an American army officer who happened to be in a city uh, during a time of unrest and panic and instability. This was towards the end of the 19th century. And in the midst of all the turmoil, he, he saw a young man walking towards him in a very calm and confident, and confidence inspiring way. Without even a hello, the army officer asked the young man, what is the chief end of man? And without hesitation, the young man replied, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Ah, said the army officer, from the way you conducted yourself, I knew you were a shorter catechism boy. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And like that young man and army officer, may the truth of Psalm 46 of a God who protects, refreshes and controls our God, your God, may it set you free from anxiety and fear in this time of stability and uncertainty and may it fill your heart and mind with God's peace that passes understanding. Let's pray for a moment. O oh God, our refuge and strength be our ever-present help in this time of trouble, protecting us with your favour as with a shield. Lord Almighty, be with us as you promised, refreshing us with the Spirit-inspired scriptures, hope and encouragement. God of Jacob, 
our fortress, enable us to surrender our often anxious and fearful hearts to the truth that you are in total control. Hear us for the glory of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to uh, sing together. It's in the Scottish Psalter. It's uh, Psalm 121, a psalm of confidence in God that he will watch over us and keep us. I to the hills will lift mine eyes. From whence does come my aid? My safety cometh from the Lord, who heaven and earth hath made. sends all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen.